three, two. Why, hello, listening audience out there. Welcome to the Financial Fundamentals Show with Alec Tuckman, Wealth Advisor, and Eric Bram, Actor, Comedian at Large. We're demystifying finance one podcast at a time and having a darned jolly good time doing it in the process. I liked how you called me large, Alec. <laughs> yeah, so consider this the stuff they want to teach you in school but don't know what to teach or how to teach it. That sounds like public education at its finest. It's no secret that high net worth investors have access, Eric, to alternative <laughs> investments that most people can only dream of. Yeah. These investments include buying ultra-rare art, vintage cars, and equity in private companies. But what are high net worth investors doing today in our this year of 2022 and beyond? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today on our podcast. Okay, Alec, I'll bite. What are high net worth investors doing in 2022? It's a mouthful, isn't it? It is, 2022. <laughs> it's hard to say. The start of this year, like the beginning of every year, is almost like a clean slate. And we had, keep in mind, in 2021, an amazing year. But so far, the year has had many challenges. We know, everyone's been to the pump, gone by groceries, and we've seen a heap of trouble. Even the wealthy 1% are devising new strategies this year to save their funds since the market has been sliding. We've had issues like the coronavirus strain, the fighting in the Ukraine, supply chain shortages, microchips, we've had, or shortages of microchips, I should say. We have rising interest rates. We're experiencing a lot of uncertainty. And as they say, welcome to the new normal, right? I guess that's what's causing volatility in the markets. What do you think? I think the market does not like uncertainty. You are correct, sir. It's good to see that the conversations we've had have actually sink through the brain. I love that. Once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon, yeah. right. Okay. Boom. So you nailed it, although you didn't sound very certain when you answered that question. I'm just going with my gut, buddy. Okay. So one of the first things I see investors trying to build something of an inflation-resistant portfolio. That's what's happening these days. Now, it's not inflation-proof, but something investors can do to combat inflation, minimize the damage. Okay, so how do you minimize the damage? So I pride myself and have always prided myself on being something of a study of the high net worth investors out there. Really since I've graduated high school, it's been something of a, an obsession of mine. I've done a lot of research, I read a lot of books, a lot of articles on not only how they made their money, but how they invest it, and even more important, how they protect it. And there are organizations which really cater to high net worth investors and, and clientele at that level. And some of which inquire something like $10 million just to belong to some of these organizations. And these institutions cater to basically family offices. If, have you ever heard of family offices before? Um, that sounds like a network show on ABC. <laughs> or the Life, the life Show. Yeah. Life, uh, life, Lifetime. Lifetime, yeah. yeah. So uh, family offices deal with ultra high network families. Like I remember one, one person I was talking to, a fellow advisor, says uh, that he worked with uh, a company that work with a family uh there's a small country i think it's like Liechtenstein or something family that literally owns their own country near in europe somewhere that would be an, a family office that would work with that family to help them invest and work with them in their financial affairs do they have a single daughter that's looking for a short <laughs> jewish guy yeah but if you notice water tends to find its own level now there are exceptions to that but uh I don't know. Maybe if you throw on, I think they have some sons if you want to throw on a wig <laughs> or a dress. I <laughs> would do that. Okay. I want my country. I want a country. Okay. So, speaking in generalities here, high net worth investors are really concerned about their financial worth. They don't want inflation to consume it, like everyone else. And one such organization, which will remain nameless, is actually convinced that high inflation rate isn't necessarily transitory like the Federal Reserve once said it was. And I'm one to believe that more than anyone. I mean, it, it's interesting how quickly the Federal Reserve changed its mind where once upon a time, well, just last year they were ignoring it. Then they said it was transitory. Now they're saying uh, it's it's here for a while. And that next we're going to hear it's stagflation. Um, but we don't know. Maybe it's here to stay. And the ultra investors, the ultra high net worth investors, 
don't want to be part of it, right? They don't want to see erosion of their, their purchasing power. They don't want to see an erosion of their wealth. So therefore, they tend to invest in the funds and protect that fund from soaring of their assets, from soaring inflation. And what are some of those instruments that they are leveraging right now? I mean, they could create something of an inflation-resistant investment to safeguard. What do you think it could be? Inquiring minds want to know, Alec. Yes. I feel the answer coming. Right. And I'm going to keep you in suspense as long as possible. But before I begin, let me remind you, as always, this is not advice. These are just strategies that I've come across in talking with high net worth individuals and may have come across my desk and may have learned about through researching and talking to, again, other high net worth investors. Always talk to your advisor about your particular situation or your investment professional, your tax attorney, your CPA before making a decision and implementing any new strategy. Yeah, no promises or guarantees made on this podcast. Okay. Right. So the first instrument to consider in hedging against inflation is really real estate as an investment. Uh, If we look back at the 1970s as a model when we had stagflation, real estate may be one good way to hedge against a challenging inflationary period. You may be able to raise rents. You may be able to get some good capital appreciation on the property. Maybe you have depreciation you can write off. You may be able to charge for auxiliary services like parking, laundry, storage. The only challenge here is if the price of the real estate, as you can imagine, would I mean, getting into a California home, I know what I think an average home in California costs. What do you want? Do you want to guess what you think it is? Um. I don't want to guess because that's going to make me sad. <laughs> and I would agree with that. I mean, I can tell you in some more, I think what they call sea level areas, it's like seven hundred thousand dollars. Ouch! Uh, on up to a couple mil in some of the A-rated areas. Luckily, I'm making the, that for this podcast, so I'll be fine. <laughs> right, right. Checks in the mail, buddy. Yeah. Uh, and I know some just acquiring real estate may be unattainable for a lot of younger or newer investors. Or cash poor investors as well. Yeah. But then you have rising interest rates, and that's the only challenge with affecting things like housing prices. You have inflation being as strong as it is, and that's hard to say, especially in Los Angeles with our housing shortage supply. Uh, excuse me, let me take that back. Three, two, cut. Three, two. Then you have rising interest rates, which may affect housing prices. But with inflation being as strong as it is, it's really hard to say, especially in Los Angeles with our housing supply shortage. Still, it may be hard to scrape together that initial down payment. No one likes paying PMI, which is mortgage insurance, especially really where you're just, people say it's throwing money away, You know, whether it's a single family home or commercial, right? I, I have a, a great quote from Bob Hope, who had a painfully true quote. He says, a bank is a place that will lend you money if you can prove that you don't need it. So true. Rest in peace, Bob. Yeah. And of course, there are ways to invest in real estate. They don't require you to be a landlord. Things like REITs, which we offer, real estate investment trusts, where essentially you're just bundling mortgages and then listing them on the stock exchange or even private REITs where you don't really know what's going on behind the iron curtain, so to speak. But there's also real estate syndication, which we also do. Uh, Investor groups getting together and investing in a property like in Koreatown in Los Angeles. But understand that nothing is without risk, right? You may still have some issues with rising interest rates, wherever that property was built. I mean, you don't know if it's in a high-risk area, whether it's fire, flood, what have you. Uh, Borrowers could default on the loan, like in 2008, when things get hairy. Uh, And by the way, I think we're quickly headed towards a recession at this point. I mean, we could be in a recession based on how you define a recession, uh, the good news is I don't, I don't think it'll be anything like 2008. I can't imagine it being even close. Well, then I'll take the real estate with a side of volatility. Uh, with ketchup, please. Right. Yeah, or and those fries. Right. Because that seems like the safest way to go. No deliciously battered onion rings. I'll take those too. No. Anything fried. Okay, <laughs> right. For fried is good. Fried onion. Right. Fried water. Excluding health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. <laughs> right. And caffeine. Add some caffeine yeah. Add some to caffeine. the fried That's water. Good. Even though the tech sector is down significantly due to rising interest rates, Equity uh, in platform companies like Amazon, Apple, Airbnb, because they have uh, pricing power, looking for companies with strong fundamentals that can weather a storm. If you're okay with volatility, I mean, there's a huge discount. You're buying on sale, not for sale with tech. Yes, it could go down more, but hey, 
I know I'm throwing more money into the, the big majors. Are you familiar with the FANG stocks, F-A-A-N-G? Uh, does Dracula own them? <laughs> He and many more. Okay. You have Facebook, Amazon, uh, Netflix, Google, and I forget the other Alphabet, I think, or Alibaba. I can't remember which other A it was. But uh, yeah, if you're getting into high powered stocks like that, you are buying on discount. Even recently, I know Netflix had a rebound. They've had some major changes to their, their platform. So again, already we're seeing things change drastically, considering we're, God, last time I checked, they were down like over 3%. So this could be a great buying opportunity. And just in general, I mean, why not, if you're going to go into companies, whether it's tech or even buying things like consumer cyclicals, like Johnson & Johnson or even Del Taco or Coca-Cola, you know, why not buy the companies causing inflation rather than trying to beat them? Or curse them. Right. Yeah. That's a bingo. Yes. Again, you, you have to be really careful. I mean, tech stocks specifically are valued differently than some other types of stocks. They're particularly sensitive to interest rates. Uh, and that's why they've taken a huge beating. But uh, there's one really good ma fund manager named Kathy Wood of ARK Investments, who she used to be, she used to be a goddess the last two years because she was very tech heavy. And she was really big in investing companies that are disrupting certain industries. She went from being this goddess and worshipped to being a pariah right now where no one wants to even talk to her because her assets are way down. But I think this could be a, a good example of a great buying opportunity in some cases. Okay, so then what? Well, some high net worth investors have set their sights on cryptocurrency, mainly because they like the way it's been trending the last few years. Uh, they may be buying at a dip right now, although you can make the argument it's a newer asset class and s somewhat more risky because of that. It has been considered somewhat of a fad by some people and there have been Many a pump and dump celebrity scheme. I can tell you, I read in the journal the other day, the Carda one of the Cardassians got in trouble with the SEC for pumping crypto. It's almost like the Wild West right now. Yeah, like we really want to trust uh, one of the Kardashians with our financial future. Break out the chaps. Here we go. You, you don't want to trust the Kardashians with your financial assets? Uh, no, just my financial assets. Mm. Yeah, we may be uh, cutting that one out. I think we should, later. yes. I'm that will probably be getting it out. Yeah, okay, Keep sorry. it rated G, bro. Sorry, sorry, no sorry, problem. Sorry. Okay. We'll cut that. Three, but... two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Break out the chaps. Three, two, one. Right. Break out the chaps. Right. Okay. right. Break out the traps, the Wild West. So every once in a while, I talk to people who call me out of the blue and don't have a dime to their name. But hey, they've somehow been convinced that crypto is the way, like they see in the Tom Brady FTX commercial. Are you in? It's actually F-O-M-O. Fend off my outrage? Yeah, no. It's a uh, fear fun of uh, monkey organs. You want to try again? Uh, yes, I do. Um, fickle orange Mickey orangutans. Yeah, we could be here all day. It's the I fear, can. I can it's keep the going. Fear of missing out. And that's what really drives a lot of investment decisions. Unfortunately, that was. But that was a very, <laughs> very logical and interesting guesses. Thank you so much. I try. <laughs> so some high net worth investors are doubling down. <laughs> Cut. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. And three, two. Some high net worth investors right now are doubling down, and they're boosting their crypto investments since the recent dip. Are the wealthy wrong for putting their money into crypto? I don't know. It seem, uh, Some seem to think that it could be a good in defense against inflation as gold prices used to be. Right, gold used to be the go-to in the seventies, right? It, it had well, like its it, day. since like the eighteen hundreds, it's like gold was like the big, the big money maker, yeah. or the big, you know. Right? That, that's an interesting point because yeah. people like investing in gold. People ask me a lot, "What do you think of gold?" And as a joke, I just say, "Well, it's shiny," but really, <laughs> ultimately, people like gold because they can trace the inception from the Bible. But the the fact is, if you throw an inflationary table over gold, gold really is where it should be. I mean, it, it spiked in. It has no, been known to spike, I should say, in times of financial disarray in the markets. But as a long-term hedge, I've never considered it pretty strong. And ironically, these days when gold should be a top performer, interesting enough, it's not. Any thoughts? Well, why isn't it uh, a top performer? I think that the people that used to be believers in gold have had something of a 
dilution of that mindset where a lot of believers in gold have now gone the way of crypto. Okay. So you're not seeing the same amount of confidence in gold that you once did as a safe haven. Mm. And people are, I guess, are more risk takers or they just bought into the crypto train and they just want to jump on board. Well, then I'm kind of a crypto guy because I own Bitcoin. How much do you owe? I'm sure. Uh, How much do you own? I, I own a lot. I own about a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a percent to next to none. So, yeah, I'm big, big time. There you go. What about Ethereum, Dogecoin, any, any of those? Uh, bless you. <laughs> okay. Right. Am I well, set for retirement now? It sounds like you're all set. And okay, go, go, go. Bitcoin is considered digital gold on some level because it, it really affects the prices of other cryptocurrencies. And what's interesting, this is what's crazy. People tend to go to crypto because they don't trust the financial market. Just ironically, we see a direct correlation. Whenever the markets drop, crypto tends to drop. So that's even more crazy because think of the irony there. The people that don't trust the financial systems like crypto because number one, it's unregulated, number two, well, which we could have a debate about that. But number two, they like the fact that there's no correlation, but really there very much is. Okay, so no crypto for me. Okay. Well, I'm not saying to do it or not to do it. I'm just saying, okay. look, if you look back in March of 2020, you know, Bitcoin dropped for a millisecond to about 4,000 for a Bitcoin, right? That's the lowest we've seen in years. Okay. And when the stock market fell, I mean, again, it fell too. But ironically, at the top, you know what it was trading at the top? What? Something like 60 or 70 per Bitcoin. 60 wow. or 70,000. Wow. Well, I personally do own crypto, full disclosure. I would not necessarily recommend it for my clients. It's okay. not for everybody. Okay, I get it. So what else do you got? Alternative energy. Surging gas prices have affected the purchasing power of average consumers in every way. Uh, and in a bad way, I might add. As, as we talk about this, oil was hovering last time. I mean, at the height, it was at like 120. It dipped down to, I think, 90 or something. Now it's trending back. Yeah. Uh, and now it's there's even more complication with... Basically, OPEC, which is something of a mafia of oil, yeah. and Saudi Arabia. You know, it's funny. I read, <laughs> I read in the Wall Street Journal, the Prince of Saudi Arabia ghosted our president when he called him. So you, you know, when the oil tycoons are ghosting our president, things are not looking too good. Yeah. And they sided with Russia. I mean, really, there is it's it's a it really is a mafia. So anytime you can, you know do away with oil companies. And understand it's not just, when we talk about oil companies, it's not just putting it in your gas, your gas in your tank. You have, everything we wear, or we look around, I can look around this, you know, the studio, everything is made of, of, of plastic and oil products. It's oil derivatives. So it's not like oil is ever gonna go, really go away. Mm. I mean, even when you look at things like the, the COVID strain, I mean, it, it's affected it. It's what's caused challenges with the, with the, the supply. But overall, some countries are just, you know, over it and they're treating COVID right now like the flu. People just need to, even if it's still killing people like it is each day, yeah. people just kind of like accept it and moved on. Yeah, that bug ain't no flu. It's like flu on steroids or on meth and highly caffeinated or on Coca-Cola with Pepsi and Mountain Dew all mixed together. Yes, exactly. Like, like yeah. you now. <laughs> highly caffeinated. I, I am highly caffeinated. <laughs> Thank you to Alec Tuckman and his... Uh, wonderful drink choices in his fridge. <laughs> right. We have it all. That's the beauty yeah, of being exactly. here. That's drink. why I'm here. If you haven't tried the vanilla coffee, it's excellent, by the way. But <laughs> I digress. So, yes, and I digress from our conversation. There has been a big shift from to focus on clean and green energy, what they call ESG funds, um, which are basically green funds, social and, and governance funds, such in focus on stocks like electric vehicles, tes Tesla, for example, NEO being so high. Those are car companies, but they trade like tech stocks. And global acceptance of electronic vehicles is growing. According to Utility Drive, which I believe is a, an auto uh, website, the global sale of electric vehicles increased by 80% in 2021. Yet ironically, only 5% of vehicles on the road at this time are electric. I gotta get me one of them Teslas. Still on the whole cowboy thing, aren't you? How can I get that up? I need a Tesla. <laughs> so we actually have a Tesla. And as uh. much as I love it, it can be kind of a pain. Mm. <laughs> I have to digress, but just for a minute here. So there are times when um, you'll forget your car key okay. and you'll lock yourself out and then you'll get a call from the wife. Hey, by the way, I'm stranded. And other times when your phone dies and you'll have that car key, then you're, again, getting that call from the wife. 
So believe me, we've seen it all. It's, okay, it's so maybe I don't perfect. need a Tesla then. <laughs> <laughs> I would have a plan B, have your phone charged at all times and have the card key and make sure you have some kind of generated backup if, for example, a politician says, don't charge your Tesla and you can't, don't know how else to get to work. Did you see that in the news? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Unbelievable. If you, For those that didn't know, in California, they, everyone's been pushing for electric vehicles, but then... They announced what, a couple of weeks ago not to charge your electric vehicle because it would overtax the pla- the uh, the electrical grid. So darned if you do, darned if you don't. Really, it's yeah, you yeah. just gotta throw your hands up. It drives you crazy. Yeah. Let's all get bikes. You know, bikes are good. I think your next podcast would be a Tesla, a pro Tesla uh, podcast. You think so? I think so. You think so? You and Elon Musk. I can. Elon Musk will replace you, and I'll I'll deal with Elon. <laughs> you know, Elon has a financial advisor. Oh. Huh? Yeah, it should be you. I don't think all the advice is that good because I read about a big mess up in the uh, the journal. But hey, no one's perfect. Go to Alec Tuckman, Elon. Yeah. Okay. I, if only. Okay. So, again, why should we follow high net worth investors and in some of their strategies? Well, because we want to be like them, right? I mean, they're the the high net worth people. Monkey see, monkey do. Maybe I'll learn what they're doing and become rich too. Exactly. Yeah. And what we're doing essentially is a method called modeling. And there is some truth to that. We want to make oh, sure. Oh, but we... just so you know, I did some modeling in my day. Is that right? Yeah, six pack abs were not on display. Okay. Okay. And what did you model exactly? Your your uh, Star Wars figurines. <laughs> uh, did you do you have that magazine? <laughs> is it under your uh, your pillow? <laughs> I think so. I mean, look at these hands. I mean, they are pretty sexy hands. And that's Hand what model. I model. Yeah, hand hands, model. feet. They're insured and everything. Right. Okay. Like every part of my body is insured. Okay. Yeah. Well, you should have that insured. You know, it's you'd be the uh, the rock star of hand models. And feet I think so. Models. I think so. Podcast rock star. <laughs> More like teenage wasteland, I think. There you go. Okay, thanks. Well, having your personal investment strategy is great. But sometimes following height now with investors just to get new ideas or learn new be- investing behaviors Definitely has their benefits. Oh, like deciding whether I should drive the Rolls or the McLaren to work today, basically, right? right? Or in your case, the Prius. Oh, whatever. <laughs> right. Don't dog Priuses. I like Priuses. We oh, but not Prius. as much as Tesla. Whatever. <laughs> and Elon. Look, high net worth investors. Me already. Okay. <laughs> high net worth investors may have the inside track and access to more resources. They may be a little more educated. They may be able to work with more educated advisors and have more experience with issues, any kind of trials or tribulations regarding their wealth. Moreover, high net worth investors are usually the ones who are in financial control of the market and commodities in real estate and may cause major swings. And they're usually forgiving me for my late mortgage pay- payments as well. Thank you so much, whoever did that. There you go. I think it was April from Flagstar. Okay. okay. Well, therefore, whenever you invest, you may want to be, you may be at the mercy of high net worth investor at some point. You may want to look on the other side of the trade or buying a property from a high net worth investor who may not want that property for any reason unknown to you. As a result, it may sometimes be best to follow industry experts, not just because they have experience and skills, but they may know something most investors do not, which makes them successful. Hence, researching and following in their footsteps in is an excellent addition to the, your investment strategy. And even if you don't listen to the advice, it's definitely worthwhile at least to hear the advice out. You know, I've been reading a lot of Harry Potter lately. I mean, he's not rich or anything, but I'm, I'm learning a lot about Hogwarts, and I just wish I could burn them off my hands. So he can't just magically produce more money? No. Oh, okay. um, I wish he could. That would be our next podcast. And if I could do that, I wouldn't be podcasting. I can tell you that. That's a good point. I'd be drinking a little frou frou drink in some uh, warm climate. Butter with beer. Trees. Exactly. Finally, almost every high net worth investor I've met, with a few exceptions here and there, they usually work with some type of financial professional or CPA or tax attorney who knows the market inside and out. And they have a plan, a solid plan with a vision, a vision to implement that plan. And following in their footsteps may help increase your chances of protecting your portfolio from crashing, if not helping to grow, even in tough times. You know the expression, riding the coattails of others? Yes, and then I fell off in success. Ran away from me. Oh, I know, so sad. Well, I know a lot of people think high net worth investors have it so easy, but I've heard a lot of stories. And in some cases, they may have it harder than the rest of us. Okay, tell, give an example. 
Well, like employees trying to blackmail their employer, mm. a high net worth individual, because they know they have money. Mm. Now, just once, we're talking six or seven times in, in the last five years. I mean, these are personal stories I've heard from the horse's mouth, right? And because of things like the hashtag Me Too movement, for example, where a woman crying wolf. Now, don't again, I'm not trying to get political here. I'm a big believer in the hashtag Me Too movement. But the wealthy have their own share of problems. And so th like that notorious B.I.G. song, Mo Money, More Problems. Now understand, I support, like I said, that the hashtag Me Too movement. But when it's weaponized against the innocent, it's done without collateral damage. You know, it's not without collateral damage, I should say. In some cases, when people know you have money, it's like having a target on your forehead. Yeah, it's like Jeff Bezos at Amazon. Like the... Um didn't that photo get out through his mistress's brother? Yeah, the brother. Yeah, and that led to his divorce. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No wonder once he wants to get off the planet so fast and fly around in space to get away from that. Right. Well, I think my wife is spending, or her spending habits at least are subsidizing that flight or her next flight. We have a, a new Amazon box at our doorstep daily. And most people cut back on spending in inflationary times. My wife doubles down, but hey, it's... Maybe Jeff Bezos can take your wife out to space too and save you some money. At the very least, he should. She should at least be in the, in the trunk so she can enjoy the ride. <laughs> <laughs> we have clients that won the lottery. We have clients that receive settlements you know, or maybe come into some kind of windfall situation like an inheritance or gambling winnings. And we have to go through not just ideas to invest, but we have to go through a laundry list of things for them to do and not to do before they even invest a dime. Because, well, let me give you an example. Like rule number one, don't tell anyone you have money, right? Don't flaunt it. Don't throw it around. Don't loan it to family members and friends and colleagues. But pretend it doesn't exist and you will be rewarded tenfold with time. Well, that's no fun. Yeah, but there is a statistic I once saw on the news. It says 70% of lotto winners end up being broke in five years. Oh, well, that makes sense. Uh, maybe some of that advice makes more sense now because that statistic is really depressing. Right. Isn't I don't that, want. I don't want to win the lottery now. Isn't that how you, I was gonna say? Isn't that how you yeah. ended up in your situation? Exactly. <laughs> it's also about wealth protection and preservation. If you invest in something, you may think, "Hey, I have all the money in the world. Why worry about that?" Well, the irony is, high net worth crowd may have lost fifty percent of the value of their assets during the subprime meltdown in two thousand eight, just like everyone else. And just because you have money doesn't make losing half your assets any easier. Losing half of anything is upsetting, no matter how much you have. Yeah, been there. Gosh, it sucks being rich. Oh, yeah. poor. Another good example is McAfee, John McAfee, who of uh, the viral, antiviral McAfee fame. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was re reputed to have anywhere from 7 to 10 million. And then when he passed, supposedly, it dropped to something like one to four mm. because of bad business investments. Think about that. There's a great documentary on Netflix about him. Yeah. Just so you know. Yeah. You're welcome, Netflix. <laughs> Nothing like those non-shameless plugs for yeah. somebody else. And like I said, when you start making more money, you end up having more problems. You become more of a target to more people. The media may put you in the limelight. And then you think how easy it is for some predator to find out everything about you, just Google you, your home, your accounts, your family. With the right software, you, it's easy to do. Some bad actors could just use this software in a couple keystrokes, know where you live, what you do, how, how you do it. Services can provide so much detailed information nowadays. There's really no privacy anymore. So imagine being some predator who wants to exploit that. It's just way too easy in this day and age. They could target your phone number, your cell phone, your email address, online data. It's a lot easier to do a lot more damage than it used to be, especially if someone knows who you are and how much you have. Totally, dude. I mean, thank God I'm broke. Actually, I'm a broke nobody, and I get bombarded with these Nigerian and Russian spam and scam daily. They ask me for my PIN number and bank account so they can store my money, their money in a bank account temporarily because some prince from Dubai needs to shelter money temporarily. But hey, they keep promising to make me rich in the meantime while I help them out. It, it just never ends with these yeah. these emails. That's exactly my point. And even if the scam doesn't work and your money's still intact and untouched, think of all the time we waste just 
picking up the phone on spam calls, getting through that nonsense on the day. You have the emails you have to go through, all that junk mail, the spam texters constantly interrupting. And by the way, when did the nationally do not disturb, do yes. not call list, where is that? Where are those people protecting our rights? That just like went in the garbage somewhere. That was just like, oh, right, you're, yeah. You're, Unbelievable. Anyway. It went nowhere. <laughs> what a joke. Yeah, why did I sign up? And then you have the human component of the family wealth, but not even taking into account the outside predators. The real question is, and this is the biggest mistake I see, how do you make sure the kids or the grandkids don't squander the inheritance away? Okay, I'm going to guess on this one because you put something in the will saying they can't touch it until a certain time, right? That is one strategy. You can do a, sp- a spend thrift trust, for example, to regulate the spending. My dad had a really great quote. He said, a trust is something you set up for someone you don't trust. Smart guy. Yeah. Smart man. And there are other trusts out there. There are over a dozen different types of trusts. There's a Q-tip, Q-tip trust. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> I can say it once. Okay. That is if, for example, you're on, let's say, wife number two and you want her, this is good for you, if you're on wife yeah. number two, you want her protected, but you want something a little left over for the kids after that or maybe a charity, this is a great way to have a trust in place for a specific type of situation. There are, like I said, a dozen different types of trusts. You can use them for to leverage a variety of different situations, anything from tax strategy to philanthropy to wealth preservation. I need to get me one of them trusts. And again, with the cowboy I know, I but I want, a tr- I want a Tesla and a trust. Go with it and run. I love right. it. All right. Well, High net worth investors face greater risk, I think, on some level. And people just assume they have money, they have less to worry about. I think they have more to worry about. Like, what do the kids do with the business, right? If you're leaving them a business in the will, it's not just about the, you know, the monetary assets. Will they just run into the ground? Do they know what they're doing? Do you trust them enough to, to come up with innovation and revolutionize the company and take it in a new direction to thrive? So it'll be like the world calm of its day? Yeah, or Enron, the Enron oh, of the day, yeah. yeah. So there's a full of them. A lot of them. Yeah. And the wealthy become wealthy by understanding current market trends, whether that's the stock market, crypto, real estate, and how to make good, educated predictions where those markets are going, right? No one has the, everyone wants the illustrious crystal ball, and no one's perfect, but there can be an education where they may be going. That's why if you want to learn about things like real estate and alternative real estate investments, and maybe talk about other ideas to mitigate risk in challenging times like right now when we have inflation. You know, the next hot market, you buy in. You don't want to buy, this is the biggest mistake, you don't want to buy in at the top of a market if the market's hot. You want to buy low and sell high. And to give you a great example, I'm going a little off topic now, I I understand that, but there's one of the most famous funds out there was the uh, Magellan Fund back in the 80s where it was known for getting 30% return at the height, 30% return. Can you imagine that? Can't imagine, no. That means every two and a half years or so, you could double your money. Just think mm-hmm. about that for a second. Ironically, the most amount of money lost, more people lost money in that fund than made money. Why do you think that is? Because people jumped in when everyone thought it was hot and it was too late to, to capitalize after when the, it was low, yeah. After the party was over, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So again, you just have to be careful when you're investing. When people are crying in the financial news markets, that could be a great buying opportunity. So just don't go, it's that contrarian theory. You don't want to do follow the herd. You don't want to do what everyone else is doing. And in some cases, we can offer a lot in that capacity. Like them, follow them, Google them, the, the uber rich, even if you... In, even if you don't like some of them, just follow and find out what they're doing. What you don't want to do is go with the random social media influencers or the actors and celebrities like the Kardashians that, you know, oh, they're going to crypto. I need to be in crypto. <laughs> or the Tom Brady's of the world where now they're pumping crypto. Why? Do you think that maybe Tom Brady possibly could have gotten shares of stock or maybe compensated in some way for that commercial if outside? If you do that, Alec, I think you kind of deserve to lose your money. Yeah, but we're here to protect people and help yeah, people, true. right? Yes. So, yeah, we want to follow them in books. You want to you want to you know, follow them in the articles and the newspapers that are written about these. Wait, wait Alex, I, I don't – What what's the newspaper? <laughs> oh, am I dating myself now? Uh, yeah, I think you're dating yourself. I think you're dating yourself. Uh, wait, you can't date yourself. Uh, you're married. 
You're not married. Not you're anymore. Not married. Right, but I'm, I can't yeah. date myself. Actually, <laughs> I'm a he. You can't date yourself. That's right. I'm he, they, them, me. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. And right. I'm I'm hot, and I, I'm a great kisser for myself. Okay. Sorry, is that too okay. much information? <laughs> any no any good. ladies out there? Anyway, sorry. All right. Well, <laughs> ladies and germs, on that note, that's our time. I hope you enjoyed our show like we did. More than life itself, my friends. And now I hope you're becoming quite the fan. I am. Like, you know, like in Misery, I want to break your foot and tie you to a bed. Ah, the movie Misery, right? Yes, yes, yes. Great movie. Well, uh, look at the time. Yikes. Here we go. Okay, here, allow me. Let me do this. If you need help with anything financial, anything from investing, financial and retirement planning, tax strategy, estate planning to rich risk management, investing. Um, I think you said investing twice there. It's so good that you have to say it twice, my friend. Fair enough. Yes. Twice is good. To generating income in retirement, to not outliving your income, you name it, give us a call. And if we can't help you, we probably know someone who can. And we're very, very good, good at connecting, connecting people, people with, with other, other people. people. I'm glad that we practiced that in the mirror so many times. <laughs> That's good to finally We off. actually harmonized on that. That <laughs> right. was good. Yeah. This is like must-see TV, but you can't really see it. And we almost were in harmony there. That's we good. were, yeah. Okay. We were good. So I'm guessing you've heard the show before? I memorize a show. Right. That's so good. You play it over and over, right? Yes, yes. All right. Well, guys out there, click, subscribe, like us, review us, link, LinkedIn. LinkedIn us. What's the the uh, actually the verb there? I don't know. I don't know. Facebook us, Twitter us, tweet us, YouTube us, subscribe this very second on our podcast. Even two seconds. A minute. Not Just even do a it. millisecond, right? Yeah, yeah. Reach out to us at our number, old school, 844-242. 0073 or check out our website wmpla inc inc dot com and email us at info at wmpla inc inc dot com until next time have a great rest of your day everyone make a great week and stay safe out there yeah. and happy, happy investing, investing everybody. everybody more harmonizing Woo. beautiful